In this video, we're going to introduce um, the conversation about graphing exponential functions. Okay, so the way I'm going to do this is by first graphing two um, exponential functions, two that are relatively simple. So we have ls f of x is x to the third, or er, 3 to the x power. Okay, so let's go ahead and fill out this table for f of x first. Um, so 3 to the negative 3 power, remember that would be 1 over 3 to the third power, which is 1 over 27. Uh, 3 to the negative 2 power, that would be 1 over 3 to, the ne or 3 to the 2, which is 1 over 9. And 3 to the negative 1 would be 1 over 3 to the 1, which is 1 third. Plug in 0, you get 1. Okay, anything to the 0 power is 1. And then so the first power, second power, and third power. Okay, 27. Alright, so now let's go ahead and plug in this, do the same table for g of x. So if I were to plug in negative 3 for x, um, I would flip what's on the inside here. So I would flip this um, to be just a 3. And then it would be, so actually, let me just go ahead and write it. So just for the first one. So here, if I were to plug in negative 3, I would say, OK, so 1 third to the negative 3. That's the same thing as 3 to the third. OK, so that's 27. OK, so I'll erase that to get it out of the way. But So that would be 27. OK, same idea for the negative 2, that'll be 9, and then 3, 1, 1 over 3, 1 over 9, 1 over 27. Okay, so let's go ahead and plot these points. So starting with f of x, when x is negative 3, um, f of x is really small, and then when x is negative 2, f of x got a little bigger, but it's still really small. And then when f of x is 1, negative 1, it's a little bit bigger, but still less than 1. And then when it's 0, it's 1, which is like maybe about right here. Oh, 0, so 1. So actually, let me erase that. So when it's when x is 0, f of x is 1, which may be, I don't know, somewhere around right there. Okay, and then when x is 1, it's 3. Okay, so that's getting a little higher. And then when x is 2, it's 9. Okay, so that's like right around here. And when x is 3, it's 27, so it's really big. It's like up here. Okay, so let's try to connect those dots as best I can and as smoothly as I can. All right, so there we go. This is the f of x function. All right, now let's, plug, let's do g of x. So when I have x equal to negative 3, y is really big, way up here. Okay, and then when um, x equals negative 2, it's 9, if g is 9. And when x equals negative 1, g is 3. Okay, and then it's, and then when it's 0, it's 0, it's 1. And then when it's 1, it's 1 third. And when it's 2, it's 1 ninth. And then 1 27th. Okay, let's try to connect these guys as best as I can. All right, kind of missed that one. Let's draw the line thicker. Okay. All right, and then this is the g of x. Um, so one thing I want you to notice is that you know this is th these are reflections of each other. Um, if you were to reflect f of x over the y-axis, so if you were to reflect f of x over the y-axis, you would get g of x. Okay, what, why is that? Well, let me let me actually let me write this. So, um, why? Because well, g of x equals one third to the x power, which is the same thing as um, three to the negative x power, right? So, this is what g is: three to the negative x power, which is the same thing as f to the negative x, right? If you were to plug in negative x for f, 
you would get 3 to the negative x, right? And if you remember from transformations that, you know, if you have g and then you have f to the negative x power, that g would then be a transformation of f reflecting over the y-axis. So exactly what you see when you've graphed it. Okay, so on the next slide, let me go ahead and talk about, in general, what uh, these graphs will look like. Okay, so in general, if you were graphing uh, the exponential function, so a to the x, where a is greater than 0 and a doesn't equal 1, um, so let's go ahead, um, let me go ahead and graph this, so, oops. So, first thing... First things first, that at the the y-intercept, so if you were to plug in 0 for x, no matter what a is, right, if you were to plug in 0 for x, no matter what a is, it will always go through at 1. So there will be a y-intercept there. And then if, um, if a is greater than 1, so such as 3, which was on our previous example, we had a equal to 3 um, for f of x, then the graph will have this sort of shape. All right, so you see that there is a horizontal asymptote at x equals 0. All right, and then if a is between 0 and 1, such as 1 third, that's what we saw in the previous example, we still go through this point um, 1, right, because when x is 0, it's still 1. Um, f of x will still be 1. Um, but it will just it will just go in the other direction. So it'll look like so you get close to zero and then you go up like this. So it'll be a reflection of um, of when a is greater than one. But you'll still have a horizontal asymptote at x equals zero.